Are you tired of having brain dead teammates in every match? Do you want to explore a world where all of your solo queue allies actually know what they're doing? Uh, yeah, sorry, that world doesn't exist. But today I will show you a way how you can use all of those headless chickens in your team to your advantage. So from now on, you will be actually happy having them in your team. Hello my friends! If you paid attention to the Fredrin gameplay, you just witnessed a technique that is called baiting. A technique that really helps you to climb up the ranks or even wins your match in the grand final of the M4 World Championship. But more to that later. Firstly, let me know in the comments which advanced guide you want to see next and get your baits out. We're going to fish for Kadit. <coughs> First, the basics. What even is baiting? The general idea is to let your enemies think that they have a good chance to achieve something, which they actually can't. Here, I'm running very close to Karina who could kill me easily. I want that Karina believes that I'm a stupid idiot who just runs around like a headless chicken. In reality though, I'm just a living bait. I know that I can stop her sprinting attack with my second skill. So I lure her towards this bush where Odette is already waiting for me. This is how a successful baiting attempt looks like. Basically, any hero can become a bait for the enemy. Tanks are the safest bait for the team since they can sustain a lot of incoming damage before their allies jump out of a bush to let the trap snap. But many enemies are smart enough to not blast their skills into the tank's face. So it's harder to bait an enemy with a tank than with a squishy marksman. The chance to bait an enemy with a marksman is much higher, but the chance to die while baiting the enemy is also much higher. Basically it means the higher the risk, the higher the reward can be. Now we know what the basic concept of baiting is, but why do we even need to bait the enemies? In the lower ranks, you probably don't need to bait the enemies at all. They just keep coming to the lane without even thinking about it, which makes it very easy for you to ambush them. But once you reach a higher rank, you will start to fight against stronger and smarter enemies. Without a bait, the enemies might refuse to get out of their safe position. And it's just very hard to ambush enemies who stay under the turret. This is especially painful when you're a part of the winning team, since your advantage is slowly melting away because of the stalemate. To keep your advantage and the pressure high on the enemy's team, you need to lay out baits and hope that the enemy is taking them. You already saw how I used myself as a bait to lure Karina into a trap, but you can also use the actual headless chicken in your team as a bait. Let's say you have the typical noob Layla in your team. She's clearing waves mindlessly and pushes without any vision. This you can use to your advantage. If you're playing a burst hero like Kadita, you can hide in this bush while Layla does her mindless things on her lane. If the enemies want to flank her, they will walk by this bush 95% of the time. So you set an ambush here while the noob Layla acts as your bait. She doesn't even know anything about it of course, but that doesn't matter to you. Now, when the enemy is passing by who wants to kill her, you can let that trap snap. This is one way how you can use your brain dead teammates to your advantage. If you want a whole guide on how to use brain dead teammates, write headless chicken into the comments. Heroes are not the only bait that exists in the game though. Let's see if you can guess what the bait in this situation is. So... What was the bait in this situation? The minions, of course. As Lena in the early game, you have to clear waves to get farmed. So you have to leave your turret in order to get close to the minions. Unless you clear your wave mindlessly and let your minions run towards the enemy safe zone, of course. This you shouldn't do, of course. Just let your minions beat the crap out of each other while you're hiding in a bush. When the enemy's laner is coming to clear the wave, you just wait for the perfect opportunity to ambush them so you can poke them away or even get a kill, which gives you the upper hand on the lane. For that, your laner should be stronger than the enemies, of course. Objectives and farm material are in general a very good bait that you can use. Now, as we all know, kills are not winning you any match. You need to take objectives and destroy the enemy's base to win. To achieve that, 
You can also bait your enemies away from the main objectives. My HP here is very low, so I am a perfect bait to lure the enemies away from their base, which is under siege right now. It is of course very stupid from Link to follow me here to kill me, because a second after he killed me, he lost the match. So many ML players thirst only for kills and action, that you can use this behavior against them. Another good example to get an objective we have here. Your team is forcing a team fight, while your side laner split push the lane on the other side of the map. The split pusher is always very easy to pick off, since they are visible on the map and deep in the enemy's territory. To distract the enemies, you can force a team fight near another objective and try to keep them busy while not fully engaging into the fight. You're outnumbered after all and would obviously lose a fight when you go all in. In an ideal world, all four of you survive the fight while the fifth member of the team successfully takes down the turret and runs for his life. In a losing scenario, I often attempt to split push while the enemies are taking the lord. Like this at least two of them are forced to retreat to the base, so my allies have a much better chance to contest the lord. Or I actually get the chance to finish the game like here, which is in the end the ultimate goal. You could also bait off the skills of your enemies before you force a team fight. Our team took the lord here and the enemies are turtling up inside of the base. This is the correct decision from them, since they are behind in gold and level. In this case, the enemies want to fight us inside of the turrets, which is of course a huge disadvantage for our team. It is not wise to tower dive now and die without achieving anything, so better play it safe and wait for your minions to arrive. It's inevitable that we will fight on the ground, so I'm trying to bait out the skills since I'm the Roma here. Cyclops actually took the bait since he wasted his ultimate on me. As Cho, I can easily jump over the walls and return to safety. Harley also threw his ultimate away, which is a huge problem for their team now. With two ultimates wasted, our team now have a much easier time fighting them. And ultimately, we can destroy their base without any resistance. These two mistakes might look like a small thing at first, but it actually cost them the match. As last example for today, I want to show you the ultimate bait. This is one of the most iconic bait from the M4. This is a very high level play, so pay attention. Here we have the grand final match between Blacklist International and Echo. The Lord is coming up in a few seconds and Echo is currently in the river area. They knew it will be hard to contest the Lord, especially against the Ubi threat from Blacklist International. So they beautifully set up a trap. After Franco saw Frederin and Lolita in the jungle, he immediately returns and gives up his bush for Blacklist to camp in. Now take a look at Glue's and Brody's position. Glue camped at the rep buff and waited until the minion wave passed him, while Brody cleared the mid lane. Glue now enters the sneak mode and walked towards the blue buff area to open up the bushes, which were empty. At this point, the position of all blacklist members was revealed. If the bushes near the blue buff area are empty, then they must be camping on the top side of the map. And this was proven soon after, since Barrett spotted Valentina and Joy on the top bush. Now once Beatrix was spotted, Farsa immediately used her ultimate. At this point, Blacklist has already fallen into Echo's trap. If you see that your enemies is wasting their ultimate before the teamfight even started, what would you think? Of course you will think that you can easily win the teamfight now and that Echo just made a huge blunder. Blacklist is one of the strongest team known for their chemistry in teamfights, so there is no way that they will waste this opportunity. They fully commit to the teamfight, destroying Barrett and Franco in the process and also stole the Lord while they are at it. Glue is trying to take Beatrix down now, so the entire team focuses now on protecting their main damage dealer. It all seemed to go very well for Blacklist, but there's something or better, someone missing in the fight. Brody skipped the whole fight in the Lord area and you all of his enemies are contesting the Lord. The entire taking the Lord thing was just a huge bait to lure Blacklist out of their base. So Brody could take it easy and backdoor Blacklist to destroy their base. Blacklist couldn't foresee that this will happen and this just shows you the power of a successful bait. With a perfect bait, you can easily win a game in the grand final of the World Cup. Now most of us are just aiming to reach mythical glory in solo queue and to make this journey a cakewalk, you should check out my video where I tell you which heroes are the best to rank up in this season. See you over there.